Hi again, here we are talking about Xcode and we're still working on the weather app. And um, this is Xcode 7 and we're working on um, our weather app. And so far we've created, you know, our view controller and set up some stuff in storyboard. And then we created this uh, weather service class that is using the, the delegate protocol, right? Or the delegate method, right? Or pattern. And, um, you know, it defines a protocol here called weather service delegate. And that protocol contains one function called set weather. Okay, so anybody that wants to conform to our weather service delegate must implement the set weather function. And then, you know, essentially this protocol sets up the situation where the compiler can check for that and make sure that everything you know, it is as we say it is, right? Okay, so we're just kind of making, you know, writing in some instructions and a sort of a contract, and then, you know, our code is going to follow that contract, and the, and the compiler is going to make sure, right? Okay, so uh, so what's going to happen here? Well, uh, I've got this set up here, but what I need to do is somehow I need to get the weather data to view controller, right? So imagine, you know, our weather service app is going to load the data. You know, it's going to request some data from the internet, wait for a reply, and then it needs to wrap up that data somehow, right? And the data is going to be a lot of information. It's going to be the city name, the humidity, the wind speed, the temperature, the minimum, maximum temperature, you know, and a lot of other stuff. Um, you know, the location, I think it gives you the location, you know, in latitude and longitude. And, you know, and that's actually a lot of information, Um and we, you know, we could store it in a lot of different ways. Um, what I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to pass it to the set weather method in like one package, right? And we could put a bunch of parameters here, but it would be so long and complicated, you know, it would just look kind of ugly and not be very easy to work with. So what I want to do is I want to create um, a single item that represents all of the weather data and then pass that one variable here to set weather. Okay, so we're going to do that with a new thing called a struct. And this is not a new thing, but it, maybe it's new to this video series, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a new Swift file. So I'll do uh, Command N to make a new file. And I'll go up to iOS source and I'll choose Swift file. And then the Swift file that I'm going to create, I'm going to call it weather.swift. Okay, weather.swift. And upper, I used an uppercase W, right? So class names and struct names all begin with an uppercase. So in this case, I'm going to start with struct, and then we'll give it the name weather. And you'll notice this follows the same procedure we used when we created the weather service class, okay? And structs and classes are very similar. They're almost the same. They can do a lot of the same things. There's very few things that are that are different about them. Okay, there's just a couple things, right? So, so this is pretty much very similar to the class we created here. So I've got weather service struct here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one very simple, and what I wanna do is just give it some variables. So maybe it'll have a city name variable, which will be type string, okay? And then maybe it will have a temperature variable, which will be type double, right? And then what else do we need? Um, what else did I put in my view controller? I guess I got description, right? So we'll, we'll put that in there too, right? So I'll say um, let description equal a string, okay? And I have a problem here. I've, you know, I've got these let variables, right? So these are fixed. They're not going to change, okay? Um, and I haven't given them any values. So if they can't change and I didn't give them a value, that's not very useful, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include an init. So the init is the initializer, right? So when you, whenever you create a, um, a weather object, right, or a weather struct, you'll call on the initializer, and we'll use the initializer to initialize our variables. And we can include more variables here. I'm just going to start with these three. And so we'll say city... Uh, name colon is a string, comma, temperature colon is a double, and description colon is a string, okay? 
And then what we'll do is we'll say self.cityName equals city name. Self.temperature equals temperature. Self.description equals description. Okay, and so there we have an object that can have these properties describing the weather. And so the idea here is that we can just make an instance of this object, set these properties, and then we have one object that has all the properties that describe the weather. And we can pass that around within our program easily. Okay, and then we can do some other things in here to kind of ease our, you know, how we work with the data. And we'll, we'll get to that later, but for right now, we'll, we'll just stick with this, right? So how are we going to use this weather struct? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to service here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create, like let's imagine you requested your data. And then you waited for the data to show up. And then we, you know, let's say process the data. Right? And then what we want to do is we want to make in this processing step right here, we want to make a new weather struct. So we'll say let weather, that's lowercase, equal uppercase weather, right? And so I'm going to choose the weather item here with uppercase W, right? And then when I type the parentheses here, you can see it shows me the initializer, right? And it says like you're going to enter the city name, the temperature, and the description, right? So maybe for city name here, this actually should be the city that you got here, or we could actually get the city from the data, but I'll, I'll just put the city name in there, and then we'll just imitate the data here. So maybe the temperature is, you know, um, 237.12, and the, the text description is, you know, a nice day, okay? I put 237 degrees because that'll be Kelvin, right? And that's how we're going to get the weather from the weather service, and we'll have to convert that to Fahrenheit, but you'll see how we do that in a minute, right? So, so anyway, so there's our temperature and the description and the city, right? And now that we've got this, what I want to do is I want to send it back to, to our um, view controller via the set weather method. So what I want to do is I want to put the the weather in here like this, but the problem is this function set weather that we've defined, right, doesn't receive that parameter. So, so why don't we do that? Why don't we add that up here? I'll type lowercase weather colon is type uppercase weather, right? So that's saying we're going to have a variable called weather, and it's going to be type weather, which is the weather struct that we created. Okay, so it's going to be an, an instance of this weather struct, okay? And now it says, oh, you know, we've got an error here because this doesn't receive that parameter. Let's uh, put the parentheses here, and then you can see it says weather there. And um, it actually typed the uppercase one. I want the lowercase one, right, because that's this. So this lowercase one is an instance of the uppercase weather, and we want to send that one to, um, to our delegate, right? And so that's okay. And then we'll go to... Um, you know, view controller now, and you can see now we have an error, right? And it's saying, hey, you know, we don't conform to the weather service delegate protocol, right? And we kind of do, except for our set weather method doesn't receive the weather parameter like it should, right? So let's type that again. So let's type in set weather, and now you can see that as I start typing set weather, it actually gives me the whole description, right, from the protocol, right, which includes the weather variable. So we'll hit return, right, and um, and then we've got weather here, and it receives, you know, a, a weather variable that's type weather, and then we can say print, um, and we can say, you know, we'll put the stars in there, we'll say set weather, right, and then maybe we'll print, um, let's print some of the values, right? So, um, you know, this weather variable is going to have um, city, colon, and then to get the value from the struct, we'll just say the variable name, dot, and this has to be, again, the lowercase variable, right? Because the uppercase one represents the, the, 
the struct, and the lowercase one is an instance of that struct, right? So we'll say a city name, and then maybe we want to say temperature colon, and then we'll type in weather dot temp, and then maybe we want to do the description, so we'll do uh, description colon slash uh, weather dot description, right? Okay, and there we go. So let's give that a test, right? So um, we'll test our project here. And there we are. And we'll get the weather here for, uh, how about uh, Barcelona, did I spell that right? Let's see, so I'll hit return and you can see over here it says city, Barcelona, temperature is 237.12, description is a nice day, right? So, so let's go through that, right? We, um, we started here, you clicked the set city button tapped right here. So you, set, you, you tapped on this button. It called the open city alert method, which is down here. It created an alert controller with the name city and the text, the message, enter city name. And then we added a cancel action. So we created a cancel action with the name cancel. And then we added that action to our alert controller. And then we created an OK action, right? And we set the text to OK. And then for the OK action, we gave it a handler right here. So whenever you actually tap on this button, it's going to do the code here inside this block, right? Which begins with the curly brace here and ends down here. And then what that's going to do is it's going to get the text field out of the block or out of the alert get the text of the text field, and then it's going to call weather service get weather. So it's going to talk to our weather service instance and call the get weather method and pass the name of the city to the get weather instance. Okay? And so this get weather instance is defined here, right? We, we create an instance of get weather, right? And when we created that instance down in view did load, we set the delegate property to self. So inside weather service, it owns a variable called delegate, and that is a reference to this instance right here, this view controller instance. So when we look at weather service, when we call on the get weather with the city name, it receives the city, and then it prints a message out here which says weather service city, and we see that here, weather service city Barcelona. And then we haven't done this yet, but we're going to request some data from the internet to get the weather. We're going to wait for it to return to us. We're going to process that data. And then we're going to wrap all the data up as a weather struct. Okay, so this is a struct that we defined here that has city name, temperature, and description. So it's a simple object that has three variables, right? Three, you know, let variables. So they're, they're fixed, right? Once you set them, they don't change and you can initialize it this way, right? And so we initialize it there with the city name, the temperature, and the description. And then if our delegate has been set, right, we just check it because it's an optional, it might not have been set. And if it has been set, then we're gonna call the set weather method. And we know that this delegate will have the set weather method, right? Because a delegate, you know, our delegate must be a weather service delegate right, and all weather service delegates must follow this protocol, which means that they have to have the function set weather, and their function set weather must receive a weather object, right, okay? So this is gonna call set weather and then pass the weather object to set weather, and so in our case, our delegate is view controller, and the set weather method for view controller does indeed receive a weather object, and then here we can print the weather information on the page, okay? I know that's kind of a long round trip there, but it really it, it's not that complicated once you understand the, the, the ideas behind it. And the key thing about the delegate is the delegate here is saying, like, let's make an agreement that anybody that is a weather service delegate must 
you know, implement these methods or, or define a method with this, you know, interface, right? It doesn't say what the method has to do, so that class can define it however it wants, but it just has to have this name with and receive this parameter. And that makes it safe for us to call on that method here, right? So if they didn't implement that method and we tried to call it here our program was would crash and that's why we we make these kind of agreements right so we set this up so that you know before we even run the program and crash it the the computer can figure out whether we've done things correctly or not right and we declare our delegate up at the top here so anybody that wants to be a weather service delegate they they get this at the top and um, then they have to, that means that you know the computer will see that this is a weather service delegate and it'll check to make sure that we've implemented the protocol Okay, so anyway, so there you go. That gets you further along on the weather app. And then on the next step, what we'll do is we'll actually go out on the internet and get the weather data. Okay, and then hopefully we'll be functioning and then we can go back and kind of adjust our storyboard and, you know, make this look a little better too. Okay, so thanks for watching and I hope that was helpful.